guys, I'm back in the kitchen. First of all, I want to thank everyone for commenting, sharing, liking all the videos that I've been putting up. I actually got a call from a friend of mine and uh, she wanted to know if I could do a recipe of my scones that I used to sell in my old restaurant creamer kitchen. So that's what I'm gonna dig into today and show you how easy it is to do it. The ingredients I'm gonna use for these scones are, I've got all-purpose flour, some granulated sugar, I have some salt, baking powder, sorry, that's baking powder. I've got baking soda here. I have some raisins. Uh, these are Thompson raisins. I have cubed butter. This is unsalted butter, cubed and chilled. And I've got some buttermilk. I'm gonna make these scones all by hand. Now, if you don't wanna use your hands, you could use a food processor or you could use a stand-up mixer with a paddle attachment. But I'm gonna do it by hand just to show you how easy it is to do. So in a large bowl, I have my all-purpose flour. I'm just gonna add all my dry ingredients to this. My sugar, my salt, baking powder, sorry, baking soda, and baking powder. And all you wanna do is you wanna mix all of this up together so that it's nice and combined. So now I'm gonna tip my cube chilled butter into my flour like so, making sure that that um, butter is nice and chilled and I'm just going to mix it around so that each cube of butter is coated in flour. So the reason why I'm doing this by hand is because I've done, I'm doing a large recipe. It's actually Mother's Day tomorrow and I've decided that this is what I'm gonna give my mother-in-law and my mother for Mother's Day. I'm gonna make some scones, freeze it, and then give it to them in a Ziploc bag so that they can make their scones whenever they want and just pop them in the oven. So if you can see here, I've coated the, bu the butter in flour and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze the flour in between my fingers and creating a crumble. So I've worked my uh, butter throughout my dry ingredients and if you come a little closer, you take a look at exactly what you're looking at, what you're trying to achieve here. So I've squeezed the butter through my fingers like so and you want little knobs of butter, a little shaggy uh, looking crumble. And at this point, I'm gonna add my raisins. And then I'm just going to fold that in and mix it up until it's combined. So in case you wanted to make like a citrus flavored scone, you could add some lemon zest or some orange zest, even some lime zest. You could add that part into the flour. So now I've got my raisins in and I'm just gonna kind of create a well right into the center. So I'm just gonna give the buttermilk a shake because sometimes it separates and make sure that that's nice and incorporated. So you wanna just add the buttermilk right into the well of the dry ingredients. Like so. I'm gonna incorporate the buttermilk into the dry ingredients. So I, my, my table is already nice and clean. I'm gonna eventually have to tip this whole thing over and then work it away. So I'm gonna just start to do this with my fingers and get that all combined. Making your fingers like the actual mixer or the paddle. So if you look here, it can be a little messy. Don't you worry, just clean your fingers down and what you want to achieve is you want to make sure you're mixing it, but you're not over mixing it. Um, and you want to just get any of that dry ingredients worked in, giving you a dough. So at this point, the bowl is kind of in my way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it over to the table. It gives me a lot more surface, a lot more space to work with, and just basically tip that dough right onto the table and I'll continue working that until I get the consistency that I want. So I'm just going to continue working this dough over itself, making sure that I get any of that dry ingredients in there. If you find that your dough is a little too dry, no worries. Um, I don't have any more buttermilk, but I do have some milk here just off to the side. I also have some flour just in case you need it for your making the table clean. Um, you just want to add a little bit of milk if you find the dough is too dry, making sure you're not over mixing your dough. 
So I've worked all the dry ingredients into my dough and this is what you've got here. If you notice the bits of butter right there, like I said before in my uh, beef patty, you want those hunks of butter because as those melt, it creates an air pocket and makes your dough nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna set this aside a little bit and then just add some flour to start rolling. You wanna have a good generous amount of flour so that the dough doesn't stick to the table. And then you want some flour right on top. I'm gonna cut these with um, a cookie cutter. I'm a traditionalist. I like my scones to be round and circle. Um, uh, if you wanna cut them in triangles or squares, that's fine with me. But like I said, I like mine circles, so that's what I'm gonna do. So now I'm gonna start ro um, rolling out my dough. If you notice, I didn't work my dough um, too much. I, You have little bits of, um, it's not smooth is what I'm trying to say. You don't want to make it smooth because you're kind of developing the gluten, which you don't want to do because you want this to be nice and um, soft. So now I'm just going to roll my dough every once in a while, doing a quarter turn on my dough so I can roll it nice and even. So you want to roll the dough approximately three quarters of an inch thick. Let's take a look. It's always nice to have a, hand, a ruler on hand so you can take a look at the thickness of it, and I think that's where I'm gonna go at. So I've got my cookie cutter, making sure that I'm flouring it every once in a while as I cut, and I like to work from the outside in. So as I'm placing them on the tray, you just wanna make sure that they're nice and tight so you don't have to use up too many trays. I'm gonna leave them in the freezer, uh, on the tray, and let them freeze until they're solid, and I pack them up in bags, and they can stay in the freezer for up to three to five months. So I just wanna show you how I'm cutting. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting as close as I can to the last cut that I did, so that uh, you're not doing, you're not cutting there from here to here to here, etc. You wanna try and get as many cuts as you can or as many scones as you can out of that one roll. And I'll show you what to do with the scraps of dough after this thing is whole, all cut. So I've cut as many scones as I can out of that first roll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pile all the dough on top of each other. And there's a lot of flour on the table. I'm gonna take some of that out. You don't wanna add too much flour to your dough because your scones will get a little tough. And now all I'm gonna do is softly, ever so gently, work this to a consistency or a dough that I can, with and start rolling again. So as I'm placing them on the tray, you just wanna make sure that they're nice and tight so you don't have to use up too many trays. I'm gonna leave them in the freezer uh, on the tray and let them freeze until they're solid and I pack them up in bags and they can stay in the freezer for up to three to five months. I cut all my dough. With the batch that I made, I was able to get about 56 um, two inch, because I use a two inch round cutter, uh, scone. All right, so I'm ready to bake the scones. I'm gonna only bake six. Um, I know we made 56, but who really wants to eat 56 scones at once? So um, the recipe that I am gonna provide on this video will, will make you about 28 scones. Um, before we pop them into the oven, there's a little bit of, uh, prep we need to do. I'm gonna make an egg wash, which I've made here. And the, what I like to use in my egg wash is milk. So this is just some, a little bit of milk and some egg and I scrambled it up. And I'm gonna brush that onto my scones. So you wanna give a nice generous egg wash on just the top of the scones. And this will give you sort of that golden color that you wanna achieve. What I like to do after I do my egg wash is I like to do a sprinkling of sugar, just like that. You can omit this part if you don't want too much sugar and just have the egg wash on top. And I've also preheated my oven to 350 degrees, but if you do have a strong oven or a, a, a very hot oven, you wanna do it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And you wanna pop this into the oven for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. 
I've taken them out of the oven. So in my oven, it took me about 20 minutes to cook, um, or bake, I should say. Come on a little closer and I'll show you what the, the sugar that I put on, uh, that I sprinkled on top, it gives you a little bit of caramelization there. That's the amount of color you wanna give it. You don't wanna go too brown. So now I'm just gonna pop it onto a wire rack just to cool. And then we'll be ready for a spot of tea and some scones. Bring out the jam. <laughs> 